Wow, this is one loaded sandwich, guys. Check out that spicy meatball. How do you make the perfect banh mi? Well, I'm gonna show you how. This is my version of spicy meatball banh mi. So one of the defining characteristics for me for a really great banh mi is the pickled vegetables. So the carrot that has that sweet tangy flavor and it just sets everything off. So we're gonna start there and make our own very quick pickled carrot. So I just need to slice this into some beautiful little strands. Now one carrot's gonna make way too much pickle than you need for this recipe, but that's totally not a problem. You can keep this for up to two weeks, put it in salads, put it in other sandwiches really handy thing to have in your fridge. Now I like to add some red chili in here as well. I'm using a mild chili, so this is gonna add almost more of a capsicum flavor than a lot of heat. And then all we need to finish this off is some sugar and some white vinegar. Just give that a good mix. And by the time we've got everything else done, these will be beautifully pickled. So now for the porky meatball part. This is not a super traditional Vietnamese meatball. It's a little bit of a riff, my own little take on it. And I'm gonna make it spicy. So I'm using some of my coconut sriracha for this one. I love it because it's not only spicy, but it's tangy, it's got a little bit of sweetness as well. Whatever kind of Asian hot sauce you love to use at home, you can also use for this. Now you guys know me by now and I love things spicy. You can obviously tone it down a little for your taste as well. And to that I want some sugar, some fish sauce, and a dash of salt as well. I really want these meatballs to be highly seasoned and really fragrant. They're gonna carry through that flavor right through the sandwich. And a little bit of white pepper as well. And now for all the herby bits and pieces, I've got some coriander here. And I want some spring onion as well. Now whenever I want a really fine slice of my spring onion, I always thin them out a little at the ends here. And I want some lemongrass as well. Didn't I tell you guys these would be packed with flavor? Okay, just bruise the outside there with the back of your knife and then cut that end off and I find that this outer part of the spring onion can be quite tough. You don't want to be eating that. So pull that off, trim off the end, and make sure you get a really fine chop here. Now lemongrass freezes really well. So if you don't have it handy at your local regular supermarket, head to your Asian grocer, grab a bunch, keep it in the freezer. And then finally some garlic as well. Now there's only one way to mix meatballs in my opinion and that is with your fingers. Now what you want to do is mix this very vigorously. It's going to work those proteins so we can firm up the meatball a little bit. It's a very Asian style way of doing things. And then just like my mum does whenever she's making her Thai pork meatballs, you need to show the mixture a little bit of aggression. So just slap it against the bowl. For some reason if I don't do this, I just don't get the right texture. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we wanna roll our meatballs. Now to make this whole process a little less sticky, you'll find if you wet your hands with some water first, that'll make things go a little easier. Just want little walnut sized pieces here. Are you ready? How's that? Very good. nice. Very good. I know, I knew you'd get angry if I didn't do it like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we want to get these meatballs cooked and I just want a little bit of oil in my pan. Now I want to get this pan really hot because I want a really nice, beautiful char on the outside of these meatballs. Sort of mimic the kind of smoky chariness you'd get from doing these on an outdoor grill. Reminds me of Vietnamese street food. Once so we've got some good colour on this first side, flip those over. And I think it's going to help here with this beautiful colour is that we've got 
that little bit of sugar in our meatball mix. Mm, I can already smell the lemongrass and the fish sauce. So beautiful. The other thing you want to do is sort of swirl your pan around, get that beautiful colour all over. Now these look amazing, they certainly smell ridiculously amazing. I'm just going to let them sit here in the pan while I get the rest of my banh mi roll organised. I like to set myself up with a little station here. I've got my beautiful baguette and of course in the very traditional realm of banh mi sandwiches that you get in Vietnam I have my selection of meats. So I've got some pate and when I was in Hanoi you always judged your banh mi by the quality of the pate. Now in Vietnam you get all sorts of different kind of slices of sausage or luncheon meats. This one is spiked with chili. Yum. What could be better than that? Okay, so let's get our baguette, a nice chunk here. I like to start with my pork pate. So this is an optional, if you don't particularly like pate, you can't get a hold of it, you can totally leave it out. But if you've had a banh mi in Hanoi, you probably would find this a non-negotiable. Now a couple of pieces of that spicy pork luncheon and then my chari meatballs. Now take a look at our pickled carrot and chili here. That carrot has softened right up. It'll be really tangy, crunchy. Now Kewpie mayonnaise is my preferred mayonnaise for this one. I love the Japanese style of like tangy sweet mayonnaise and then a little bit of optional spicy here. I'm going to add some coconut sriracha to this one too. And then some beautiful fresh sprigs of coriander is something I always get when I'm eating this in Hanoi. And there you go guys, that is one spicy meatball banh mi sandwich. Oh, that looks so amazing. I guess the proof is always in the eating. Now, this isn't a particularly delicate kind of sandwich to eat, so you'll have to forgive me. Mm. Mm. Wow. All those different flavors, the pickled carrot, the pork, the spicy chili, and the pop of the fresh coriander. Wow, it really is like a huge explosion in your mouth and everything just comes together beautifully. Mm. This is definitely worth getting your face messy for. <laughs> Hey guys, so my marinades and sauces are in Coles in Australia right now. They're in the sauce aisle, that's where you get your tomato sauce. I hope you can try them and if you like them, why not share them with a friend? Thanks guys, see you!